welcome back to Rewild, where we talk about environment, psychology, and other interesting things. So today's episode is number three in my, I don't know how many part series on getting healthy with me, and we're talking about decluttering. Now, I am not a minimalist guru or anything like that. I have been practicing my sloppy version of minimalism for about five years or so now. Actually, quite a bit longer, and I'll get into that story later, but... Um, what I wanted to touch on today is the connection between weight loss, stress, and clutter, and how these things have actually been shown to have a lot of interesting connections. There is this really great documentary called A Cluttered Life that I'll link below in this video, and basically the um, authors talk about the research that they have done with American families mostly, looking at how much stuff they have and how it correlates to their stress levels. Now, there has been a big surge, resurgence of minimalism in, I'd say, the last 10 or 20 years. And it's also been kind of coupled with um, a bit of a backlash. Um, so what I recommend for people to go on their decluttering journey is to subscribe to decluttering YouTube stations and also look into uh, the Con Marie system. Now, Marie, uh, Con Marie and her system, she has since said that her house is not perfectly decluttered now because she's had her third child, but I still think that that process, her five-step process, is really helpful. So maybe I'll put like a little thing up so you guys can see um, what she recommends. But there are many different ways to declutter and not every single way will always resonate with everyone. I think that getting on your journey of decluttering is very, very important. Um, we live in a society that is hyper into consuming and filling our homes with lots of stuff and we're constantly living in a state of lack and being marketed to like we need more stuff and more stuff. And really what the research has been showing is the more stuff that you have and the less organized it is, the higher your cortisol levels are up and therefore the more likely you are to have other autoimmune diseases or weight loss issues or anything of that nature that affects your physical system with respect to your stress hormones. So that's basically um, the spark notes of what I have for today is just stressing the importance of getting to a more minimalist version of yourself. Um, I like the KonMari method personally, but I know that, you know, there's different strokes for different folks. So whatever process you use to do the decluttering work that you need, um, it's, it's very important. I don't think that there are very many people in our world who don't need to declutter a little bit more. We all have a junk drawer or a messy closet somewhere. And unfortunately, every time we open that, we're going to be feeling anxious and I feel that way a lot too you know sometimes I don't get work done if my desk is dirty for example so I also notice that sometimes when I'm feeling really overwhelmed with my work or I feel like I don't have time to declutter things can kind of like escalate they can actually get even more chaotic because I think that I need to meet certain deadlines and in my meeting of my own personal deadlines even I might put the cleanup um, on the back burner and so I really want to recommend that people um, think of cleaning up and think of resetting the day in as part of the process of whatever work you're doing in your day-to-day -day life also with respect to people who have children teaching your kids that cleaning up is fun and making it like a game can I've heard can be really helpful and um, for myself, I think the thing that has helped me the most with tidying up and cleaning up is a combination of two mindset shifts. One is that I deserve to live in a beautiful home. I don't think everybody always feels this way, and I'm a big fan of the show Hoarders. And when I watch Hoarders, I would say about one in five episodes, there is a moment where the person who has been hoarding breaks down in tears saying that they don't deserve a nice home because of the trauma that they've experienced. So um, a lot of us will collect more things than we need as a result of trauma. I have hoarding in my family and I've seen that kind of process happen with a lot of loved ones. So remember that you deserve to have a beautiful place. Start somewhere small. I've often told people that in my decluttering journey, I will pick like just one desk or one table 
and I'll actually turn it into kind of like an altar, you know, like a spiritual place, or I'll put like a little flower or some candles or something on there that remind me that this is an aesthetically beautiful place. And if I have to turn it into an altar to make that beautiful aesthetic um, more sacred for myself, I'm more likely to keep it clean and decluttered. You can make little altars like this for yourself, even for cooking or for um, academics when you're tidying your desk. Make spaces in your home that make you feel good. And um, I personally, I, I think we should let go of the guilt. I think there's a lot of guilt and pressure that we put on ourselves. If you declutter one thing one, one day a week that has been needing it for months, you're on a really good decluttering path, in my opinion. So that's one strategy I've also been doing. Um, I've actually decluttered my life a few times, and I find that you know the work is never done, right? So you can go through those deep decluttering times if you have a staycation where you want to block off like a week or a couple of months to like really get into it and do a deep dive. Sometimes having that little goal of one junk drawer per week can also really like fortify your decluttering practice. Um, once you start decluttering, you're also going to notice that you save money because you're thinking about how much you don't need extra things. So it's kind of cool to see that as like a side benefit that when you're shopping, you will start to question the things you're buying a little bit more if you're more used to letting things go. My final tip for just easy beginners uh, strategies for decluttering is always have an outbox. We have an inbox, mail comes into the house, we bring in our shopping and our groceries every week, but very few of us know how things exit the house. And so really build that into the structure of your home. It doesn't have to look like much, but for me personally, there's almost always a bag or like a reusable shopping um, thing or a cardboard box that is actively being filled with things that you know, have we've outgrown that no longer are needed in our lives. There's also the method of, what is it, keep, donate, throw away. You can do one, two, three boxes if you're doing a deep declutter, and that's really helpful as well. So I hope that these small strategies help you out. If you're interested in content like this, I would love to talk a little bit more about personal organization and decluttering, as well as the scientific health benefits around your mental and physical well-being and how that connects to it. I'll also link a couple of studies down below and that really cool short documentary if you're interested in doing more of a deep dive on this topic. Cherish your environment. Where you live, your home, no matter how affluent or um, struggle bus <laughs> you're feeling in your life at any given time, something that I've learned, um, especially from like lower income communities or myself when I was lower income is to always honor what you have. There are spiritual traditions and teachings that if you have a dirt floor house or if you just have one pencil, you know, to do your homework, but you take really good care of it, you sweep that dirt floor, you clean that pencil at the end of every day, you know, the more you take care of what you have, the more abundance can come in. And I think that really goes well in with the process of becoming a, minimal, a minimalist and decluttering is that we honor the things we have in our life. Sometimes we have so much stuff that we can't even honor the things that are trapped in that junk drawer that we actually really love. So I hope that um, this inspired you to get started on your journey. A lot of the things I teach on my station and my philosophy on psychology is it's really important to start small so that you can kind of build that muscle memory of success up. So if you're sitting in a really cluttered house right now while you're watching this, just clear off the desk where your laptop is sitting or just clear off half the desk tonight, you know, and start with like small little exercises like that and reward yourself after. Do something really nice for yourself after you've decluttered an area that has been stressing you out because one of the reasons we keep things cluttered is also decluttering can uncase a lot of emotions for us as well. So realize that similar to somebody who has a lot of emotional trauma going to therapy and having to do the hard therapy work of processing something, going through your stuff, throwing away sentimental items that make you feel bad, for example, a very common one for a lot of us, um, 
it might be emotionally draining. So my mom always says, drink a lot of water because it's going to be dusty. And, you know, eat well if you're doing a big declutter day. And just remember that it is an act of self-love. And sometimes it could be a little hard or stressful. And if it's getting to that point, take a step back and just take it slow. Only focus on one closet or one junk drawer at a time. Um, but I really, I like the Marie Kahn method or the Kahn Marie method of kind of meditating on the fact that you will finish or you at least will get to a point where you feel very good about your home and your surroundings. And I like to add in my own little detail that you are worthy of a space that you love. It's important for you to live in an environment that you feel good in. So build that for yourself as an act of radical self-love in your decluttering process. And when you start to declutter your home, all of your stress levels are going to come down. I promise you, you're going to feel so much more clear-headed and joyful. There is a small percentage of the population who I think really enjoy maximalism. That's totally fine too if that's for you. I think that's a different aesthetic. And if it's an aesthetic, that's that's cool. Like do that if it makes you feel calm. But I also challenge you if you've been a maximalist for a while in an aesthetic sense, try creating little minimalist spaces in your home and see how it affects you mentally. There is a such thing as too much clutter. I think there's also a such thing as too much like nothing, you know, where it feels like a a warehouse or a hospital or something like that. So play with those levels um, for what within that spectrum for what really works for you. But remember that your home should be your own and you are worthy of feeling really good in it. So I hope that gives you inspiration to begin that journey and to honor that and remember that it has deep physiological impacts on your mental and physical health when you honor your environment. We'll see you next time. Have a great one.